good. So, first ones first, respiratory disorders. So allergies, sinusitis, rhinitis. Uh, so this can be clear, um, a white nasal discharge. And that's the first one, the Magnolia clear sinus. That's, so the first one here is the first uh, indication here. And then if it's uh, yellow discharge, then, then that's the one with Ferrari, which is why I put yellow next to it there. So uh, we've got the clear one with the Magnolia clear sinus. Uh, you know, you could think um, your BNPN type formula, uh, very similar, but maybe this is a little better. And then uh, the Ferrari clear sinus is going to treat that more heat version uh, with the yellow part. So if a patient has uh, more ear involvement, uh, I really like Pimencon myself, uh, which might have its own special reaction with ears. So if I think ear is involved, I like to use the Pimencon. Otherwise, either of these or something similar is going to be great. Um, nutritional yeast, I like to tell my patients to take. So it, it's uh, like little mini, uh, it's like little one-celled um, fungus, basically, right? So it's uh, like little mushrooms, if you will. And we know mushrooms boost the immune system. So nutritional yeast has this really good um, immune system boosting function. Um, they, it's, in, the, in the studies, it seems to be about a teaspoon a day is, is a good dose to really boost immune system. I noticed that um, my son has a little bit of, a, of an allergy. Um, and so if he takes, if I get him to eat nutritional yeast, He's sick, so it's not easy to get him to eat things, but if I can sneak it into his smoothie or something, uh, he used to just eat it by the spoon, which was awesome, but now, for some reason, he doesn't like it. Um, then his allergies are better for a day or two, and then when he's not eating it, they come, kind of come back. It's really interesting. Um, and we're in the Northwest in Portland, so um, we've got molds and dust and <laughs> lots of allergies in, in, uh, in our area, especially in the summer and the spring, tons of stuff. And um, his is kind of a, Kind of seasonal, but it's it's more it's kind of year round, but it's more and seasonal. It's worse. So, but um, it, it really does help him, and it makes a big difference. The nutritional yeast does. Uh, somebody was asking if these are too drying. Uh, if you're able to add a single herb, Shelley, then I would say uh, something like mynadong, or um, uh, if it's lung specific, um, the uh, is it by who? Mm -hmm. By yeah. So that's lily bulb, I believe. Mm -hmm. So uh, my my dog is um, Ophiel Poggin, I think is the is yeah. English term. So those are very moistening and kind of for the lung area specifically. I like those two. Um, uh, vaporizers are really pretty great. So you could give, give have somebody use a vaporizer. If they're drying out too much, it's kind of a way to moisten it to, to move if they're getting a uh, phlegm that's stuck. Uh, of course, you know, nasal lavage is always fine. So they use a neti pot or whatever. Um, that's always That's always great. Should I tell you guys a, a, a kind of a gross story? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don is instantly saying yes. So my first experience with studying medicine was actually in Nepal, and I was studying with an Ayurvedic doctor, and um, they have very unusual and uh, difficult treatments for things. And so one of the uh, one of the students uh, that I was with on this program to travel to Nepal was having a terrible sinus infection. And it was just plugged up, and she was in tons of pain, and she was taking the, all the drugs from the doctors that were there, which in Kathmandu, they're, they're one of the best doctors. And um, I would talk to the Ayurvedic doctor I was studying with. He goes, oh, I've got exactly what she needs. And so, and he was, and this guy was, uh, he was, he looked like a sadhu, right? So he was like shaved head, he had the stripes on his forehead, he had, I mean, he'd walk in, you know, looks like he's like the guy on the street sadhu, but he was like this Ayurvedic doctor who was really well-trained, and he taught in the college and everything. Fascinating guy, and uh, in this tiny little clinic where you had to duck to walk in, you know, the really short roof ceilings. If everybody's been to Kathmandu and been to those little Mayweather houses, um, but everybody's on the floor, you know, sitting on the floor and you're taking pulses. And, um, anyway, so so he had me take this vial of stuff, this liquid, and it just stinks. And so I gave it to her, and we and we and you drip it into the nose, and it and it just instantly dissolves the phlegm. It's unbelievably effective. But you have the person upside down, you drip it into their nose, and then it kind of, you know, once it dissolves, of course, it goes down the back of their throat, and then they taste this just most disgusting. But it worked really good, and she cleared her nose out, and then she washed it with the neti pot kind of thing. And then, so I go back, and I'm like, wow, what was that stuff? He's like, it was cow urine. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I told you a gross story. Cow urine. The holy cow, right? I mean, classic Ayurvedic medicine, they use something from cow. Yeah. I don't know if anybody else has come across that one, but. 
Yeah. Well, Premarin is from pregnant mare's urine too. Well, yeah. Premarin, yeah. yeah. So, so not so not gross. Too, not, not, not so gross when it's packaged right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this packaging was right. still yellow. Yeah. Was, Organic form. Yeah. Organic, yeah. yeah. <laughs> was it the urea you think that dissolved? I don't know. It was gross. I, 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 I wouldn't tell him what was in it because uh, I, I think she would have gotten sick. Um, so I, I don't think we can get that here. But, um, but Chino, you know, Chino is just right there. <laughs> yeah, a lot of cows. Really <laughs> 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 and then he gets onto a cow farm. Cow urine, yeah, right, I know. You might have Gross, yeah. <laughs> just wondering why not using points according to the body that I'm in. Um, well, they, they are and they aren't. So we're doing both, uh, Romania. So. Um, some of these fit uh, imaging and some of these fit, I mean, they just, a lot of these classic TCM points are, uh, are, are really great. Uh, they, they, and we're just kind of giving you those images that work, right? So, um, and it's, it's we're internal medicine here. So um, a lot of the imaging, it, it fits the location. So uh, points for this area of the sinuses. So we're looking at imaging, we're, met, we're imaging right nose, sinus, face. So we can do that on the whole head image or we can do it on the hand and foot image, right? So um, here's the hand and foot image. Uh, so that's torso, right? So the foot meets the head, right? And the hand is the head. So large intestine four is gonna be right across where the nose is, perfect, or LI three, one of those two is gonna be there, and sinuses. And then uh, same level of foot, so that uh, you know, arch in step of the foot, so stomach 43, 42, is gonna be right across that same level as well. So those, those locations, hand and foot, are gonna work. We just need to match up our channels, right? Uh, and then if the whole head uh, on the arm or leg, so nose level is gonna be, uh, eye level is uh, navel, so, or sorry, eye level is gonna be uh, elbow, so then just below elbow, so LI10 is gonna be kind of nose and um, sinus level, or uh, on the on the leg, uh, nose level is going to be just below the knee, so stomach 36, 37 area. Uh, so those two areas work great. You could also reverse it, of course, and then you're just above the knee on stomach 34 and spleen 10. So those can also work for, for nose and sinus, uh, specifically here. If it's sinus up above in the forehead area, of course, we're, we're higher and we're treating it like headache. So when we cover headache, uh, a little later today, we'll talk about you know all the stuff for headache. But basically, you're, you're treating it like a headache. Um, and so, what channels are we looking at? So, as we look at the face here, we've got um, mostly it's large intestine channel on the nose itself. The upper jaw and upper upper teeth are all large intestine channel. Uh, below the eye and right down stomach channel uh, is those deeper sinuses, and that's all stomach, right? Stomach, stomach, stomach. There's a little bit of small intestine channel here. I think the circle is bigger uh, than the actual area, but it's mostly under the zygomatic arch and it mostly has to do with the maxilla. So it's more the teeth issue, not so much uh, the sinus itself, but uh, mostly stomach channel, some large intestine channel. And then uh, upper palate could be a little bit of uh, a little bit of stomach channel on the inside as well. And then uh, in the forehead, of course, we've got gallbladder, bladder, so depending on if it goes there. And then if it's traveling towards the ear, I think that that is a uh, stomach channel traveling most of the way, and then, um, you know, as it follows this way, but internally, stomach channel along there, um, and uh, yeah, I think that's mostly stomach channel there. Okay, so we're gonna pick points that treat stomach channel, large intestine channel, for the most part. Uh, we can also do some gallbladder or bladder channel points uh, if it's up on the forehead, right? But mostly stomach and, and uh, large intestine channel, nose and sinus. So we can go opposite clock stomach with pericardium points. We can go opposite clock large intestine with kidney points. We can do uh, yang ming treating itself. Uh, usually I don't, I like opposite clock for the torso, but uh, the yang ming is so good at treating itself that uh, in, in the situation of yang ming, I, do, I don't mind using the name pair um, on the torso sometimes, and especially in the face since you've got so much large intestine and so much stomach, they just all pair up with each other very nicely. Uh, so we're gonna use large intestine to treat itself, large intestine to treat stomach, stomach to treat itself, stomach to treat large intestine. Um, and then we can throw in some PC and some kidney points um, if, those, uh, if those show up as well. So that's most of it. Now we just need our locations. 
So as far as locations go, we said the nose area, that's the stomach 36, is gonna be the sinus right off the nose, right? The 43 on the foot is gonna be basically the same level again. So if you had it just on one side that's plugged, since it's same channel stomach, uh, either of these, it would be same side, right? So stomach 36 or 43, same side. The spleen nine and three are just mirroring this location, um, but also helping stomach with spleen. So since this is a lot of dampness, I really like the idea of spleen involved, and then we're focusing spleen's involvement with the dampness at that level, and it's pairing with the stomach, so I don't mind that one there. Uh, and the kidney four to three, we'll get back to. Large intestine three, four is gonna be basically like that stomach 43 point. Same idea, large intestine, if it's treating itself uh, as we come out around this, the nose itself and just around this upper jaw, then uh, same side. If we're using it to treat uh, stomach channel, then we'd be opposite side. So that's a possibility. Uh, LI10, again, like stomach 36 on the arm, it's the level of the nose, right? And then uh, this might be a little bit more towards triple warmer channel as usual. And the PC3 and 4, like we were saying, it's head, neck, upper torso, uh, navel. Uh, doesn't match on that image, but on the whole head image, we've got top of the head, eyes, nose. So nose level is going to be just below the navel, uh, sorry, just below the elbow as we come down the forearm. So uh, eye level here, so that's the, gonna be right at that like stomach one here, and then as we come down stomach two, stomach three, we can work down our, our cardiac channel, right? And then last, uh, this kidney four, uh, three area is gonna be used to treat, in case there's kind of an infection happening, the yellow or green would tell me infection. So if there's infection happening, usually lymph nodes are gonna be swollen, and we wanna help the lymph nodes drain. And so if we're trying to help the lymph nodes drain, we're going to use points to treat lymph node. Lymph is on a kidney, uh, sorry, large intestine channel under the jaw here. So large intestine, right, opposite clock with kidney. That's why kidney point. And it's at the chin level. So kidney at the chin is gonna be like kidney four, three. And again, I'm needling this from four into three uh, to affect that. And that's gonna be a pretty instant also. So if they have, usually the patients will have Pain. Sometimes it's just a knot. That may not change too much, but if there's pain on the on the actual nodule, uh, the pain typically goes away uh, as soon as you feel it. So it's kind of nice. Okay. Question. Questions. The dash means that area, right? Like PC three to four area. Yes. And do you just palpate for ashi, or do you typically just needle two or three needles? So good question. Um, asking me about this kidney three, four, or the PC three, four, the dash, and the dash means it's in between those areas, or it's a zone including everything, including the PC three and the PC four and everything in between, and it could be by palpation. I would recommend that for people starting doing this. Um, and then if, as you get comfortable, you're gonna feel comfortable just putting it in. So uh, for me, I just kind of throw them in at this point, but, um, but I started with palpating everything all the time. So I'd recommend palpating if you're new to it at all, uh, or if you just want a better point. Do you throw in two, three? Usually two is okay. enough for me. Occasionally I'll get three. Depends on how big the zone is. So kidney three to four is a thread. So mm -hmm. it starts at four and needles into three. So that's a single needle. Oh. Uh, the PC three to four, um, and they're perpendicular. So they're going in perpendicularly. So I might do, maybe I don't want right at three. It kind of depends on where it is here. So if it's right at the eye, like mm -hmm. if that's where they're feeling kind of in the eye, behind the eye, then I'm at three, because that's the eye level, right? And as we go farther down, if, it, is it, if it's right at the nose, which is just a little below, or if it's farther down the face, then we can just, we can just, we know that that area is what's going to affect. And we just pick our spot more specifically, depending on how far down the cheek we go. 